a Wikivideo Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Stephen Avery Stephen Allen Avery is an American man from Manitowoc County, Wisconsin who had been wrongly convicted of sexual assault and attempted murder in 1985. After serving 18 years of a 20-year sentence, he was exonerated by DNA testing and released, only to be convicted of murder in an unrelated case two years later. In 2003, Avery filed a $36 million lawsuit against Manitowoc County, its former sheriff, and its former district attorney for wrongful conviction and imprisonment. In November 2005, with his civil suit still pending, he was arrested for the murder of Wisconsin photographer Teresa Halbach, and in 2007 was convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment without possibility of parole. The conviction was upheld by higher courts. Avery's 2003 exoneration prompted widespread discussion of Wisconsin's criminal justice system. The Criminal Justice Reform Bill, enacted into law in 2005, implemented reforms aimed at preventing future wrongful convictions. Avery's 2007 murder trial and its associated issues are the focus of the 2015 Netflix original documentary series Making a Murderer, which also covered the arrest and 2007 conviction of Avery's teenage nephew, Brandon Dassey. In August 2016, a federal judge overturned Dassey's conviction on the grounds that his confession had been coerced. In June 2017, Wisconsin prosecutors appealed this decision. In December 2017, a panel of seven judges of the United States Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit ruled in favor of upholding the original conviction by a vote of 4 to 3, ruling that police had properly obtained Dassey's confession. On February 20, 2018, Dassey's legal team, including former U.S. Solicitor General Seth Waxman, filed a petition for a writ of certiorari to the United States Supreme Court. On June 25, 2018, certiorari was denied. Early Life Stephen Avery was born in 1962 in Manitowoc County, Wisconsin to Allen and Dolores Avery. Since 1965, his family has operated a salvage yard in rural Gibson, Wisconsin on the 40-acre property where they lived outside town. Avery has three siblings, Chuck, a younger brother Earl, and Bob. He attended public schools in nearby Mishicot and Manitowoc, where his mother said he went to an elementary school, for slower kids. According to one of his lawyers in 1985, school records showed that his intelligence quotient was 70, and that he, barely functioned in school. On July 24, 1982, Avery married Laurie Matheson, who was a single mother. They had four children together, Rachel, Jenny, and twins Stephen and Will. Early Convictions in March 1981, at age 18, Avery was convicted of burgling a bar with a friend. After serving 10 months of a two-year sentence in the Manitowoc County Jail, he was released on probation and ordered to pay restitution. In late 1982, two men admitted that at Avery's suggestion, they threw Avery's cat in a bonfire and then watched it burn until it died, after Avery had poured gas and oil on it. Avery was found guilty of animal cruelty and was jailed until August 1983. I was young and stupid, and hanging out with the wrong people, Avery said later, of his first two incarcerations. In January 1985, Avery ran his cousin's car off to the side of the road. After she pulled over, Avery pointed a gun at her. Avery was upset that she had been spreading rumors about him masturbating on the front lawn, which he stated was not true. She later admitted to spreading these rumors, and that she greatly disliked Stephen. Avery maintained that the gun was not loaded and that he was simply trying to stop her from spreading rumors about him. He was sentenced to six years for endangering safety while evincing a depraved mind and possession of a firearm. Wrongful Attempted Murder Conviction In July 1985, a woman named Penny Bernson was brutally attacked and sexually assaulted while jogging on a Lake Michigan beach. Avery was arrested after the victim picked him from a photo lineup, and later from a live lineup as well. Although Avery was 40 miles away in Green Bay shortly after the attack, an alibi supported by a time-stamped store receipt and 16 eyewitnesses, he was charged.
and ultimately convicted of rape and attempted murder, then sentenced to 32 years in prison. Appeals in 1987 and 1996 were denied by higher courts. Around 1995, a Brown County police detective called the Manitowoc County Jail, saying that an inmate had admitted committing an assault years ago in Manitowoc County and that someone else was in jail for it. The jail officer transferred the call to the Manitowoc County Detective Bureau. Deputies recalled Sheriff Thomas Kukurek telling them, We already have the right guy. Don't concern yourself with it. Avery continued to maintain his innocence in the Beardson case. In 2002, after serving 18 years, the Wisconsin Innocence Project used DNA testing, not available at the time of Avery's original trial, to exonerate him, and to demonstrate that Gregory Allen had in fact committed the crime. Allen, who bore a striking physical resemblance to Avery, had committed an assault in 1983 at the same beach where Beardson was later attacked in 1985 and was under police surveillance in 1985 due to his history of criminal behavior against women. But he was never a suspect in the Beardson case, and was not included in the photo or live lineups presented to Beardson. Avery was released on September 11, 2003. By that time, his wife had divorced him, and he was estranged from his family. A court order had been issued limiting his contact with his children while he was incarcerated citing physical and emotional abuse towards his wife and children. His wrongful conviction case attracted widespread attention. Representative Mark Gundren, Republican chairman of the Wisconsin Assembly Judiciary Committee, impaneled a bipartisan task force to recommend improvements to the state's criminal justice system aimed at decreasing the likelihood of future wrongful convictions. Recommendations included a revamped eyewitness identification protocol and new guidelines for interrogations of suspects and witnesses and the collection and storage of material evidence. The recommendations were ultimately drafted into legislation that became known as the Avery Bill, which was passed and signed in October 2005, then renamed the Criminal Justice Reform Bill a month later after Avery was charged in the Hal Bark case. Avery filed a civil lawsuit against Manitowoc County, its former sheriff, Thomas Kukurek, and its former district attorney, Dennis Vogel, seeking to recover $36 million in damages stemming from his wrongful conviction. The suit was settled in February 2006 for $400,000 following his murder indictment. Halbach murder Photographer Teresa Halbach disappeared on October 31, 2005. Her last known appointment was a meeting with Avery, at his home on the grounds of Avery's Auto Salvage, to photograph his sister's minivan that he was offering for sale. Halbach's vehicle was found partially concealed in the salvage yard, and blood stains recovered from its interior matched Avery's DNA. Investigators later identified charred burn fragments found in a burn pit near Avery's home as Halbach's. Avery was arrested and charged with Halbach's murder, kidnapping, sexual assault, and mutilation of a corpse on November 11, 2005. He had already been charged with a weapons violation as a convicted felon. Avery maintained that the murder charge was a frame-up, promulgated to discredit his pending wrongful conviction civil case. Although Manitowoc County ceded control of the murder investigation to the neighboring Calumet County Sheriff's Department, because of Avery's suit against Manitowoc County, Manitowoc Sheriff's deputies participated in repeated searches of Avery's trailer, garage, and property, supervised by Calumet County officers. A Manitowoc deputy found the key to Halbach's vehicle in Avery's bedroom. Avery's attorneys said there was a conflict of interest in their participation and suggested evidence tampering. Avery's attorneys also discovered that an evidence box containing a vial of Avery's blood, collected in 1996 during his appeals efforts in the Beardson case, had been unsealed and a puncture hole was visible in the stopper. They speculated that the blood found in Halbach's car could have been drawn from the stored vial and planted in the vehicle to incriminate Avery. But FBI technicians tested the blood recovered from Halbach's car for ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid, a preservative used in blood vials, but not present in the human body, and found none. Avery's defense team presented expert witness testimony stating that it was not possible to tell if the negative result meant that Eta was not present, or if the test itself was inconclusive.
Prosecution Avery was the only innocence project inmate out of 174 nationwide to have been charged with a violent crime after their release. In March 2006, Avery's nephew, Brendan Dassey, was charged as an accessory in the Halbach case after he confessed under interrogation to helping his uncle kill Halbach and dispose of the body. He later recanted his confession, claiming it had been coerced, and refused to testify to his involvement at Avery's trial. Dassey was convicted of murder, rape, and mutilation of the corpse in a separate trial. In pre-trial hearings in January 2007, charges of kidnapping and sexual assault were dropped. Avery stood trial in Calumet County in March 2007, with Calumet District Attorney Ken Kratz leading the prosecution, and Manitowoc County Circuit Court Judge Patrick Willis presiding. On March 18, Avery was found guilty of first-degree murder and illegal possession of a firearm, and acquitted on the corpse mutilation charge. Six weeks later he was sentenced to life in prison without possibility of parole on the murder conviction, plus five years on the weapons charge, to run concurrently. After serving five years at the Wisconsin Secure Program Facility in Boscobel, Avery was transferred in 2012 to the Wapun Correctional Institution in Wapun. In January 2016, after Making a Murderer had been released on Netflix, People magazine reported that one of the Avery trial jurors was the father of a Manitowoc County Sheriff's deputy, and another juror's wife was a clerk with Manitowoc County. Juror Richard Marla, who was excused from the trial after the jury had begun deliberations due to a family emergency, later commented that early on, seven of the jurors had voted not guilty. He was mystified that the jury eventually agreed on a guilty verdict. Marla's account has been disputed by other jury members, saying no early vote took place, and an informal vote was taken where only three jury members felt Avery was not guilty. Another juror allegedly told the filmmakers of making a murderer of feeling intimidated into returning a guilty verdict, fearing for personal safety. The filmmakers' claims have also been disputed. Appeals in August 2011, a state appeals court denied Avery's petition for a new trial, and in 2013 the Wisconsin Supreme Court denied a motion to review the ruling. In January 2016, Chicago attorney Kathleen Zellner, in collaboration with the Midwest Innocence Project, filed a new appeal, citing violations of Avery's due process rights, and accusing officials of gathering evidence from properties beyond the scope of their search warrant. In December 2015, Dassey's defense attorneys filed a writ of habeas corpus in federal district court for release or retrial, citing constitutional rights violations due to ineffective assistance of counsel and the coerced confession. In August 2016, Dassey's conviction was overturned by federal magistrate William E. Duffin, who ruled that his confession was involuntary. Duffin granted a defense petition for Dassey's release on November 14 but an appeals court overturned his ruling on November 17, ordering that Dassey remain incarcerated pending resolution of the state's appeal of the habeas decision. In June 2017, the Seventh Circuit upheld the magistrate's decision to overturn Dassey's conviction, leaving the state with the options of appealing Duffin's ruling to the U.S. Supreme Court, dismissing the charges, or retrying him. Subsequently, the state petitioned the appellate court to hear the case on bank. The state's petition was granted and the appellate court reversed the magistrate's ruling, finding Dassey's confession was not in violation of the Constitution. Dassey's attorneys filed a petition to have the Supreme Court hear his case, but the request was denied. Brendan Dassey remains in prison. On August 26, 2016, Kathleen Zellner, counsel for Stephen Avery, filed a motion for post-conviction scientific testing with the clerk of the circuit court, Manitowoc County, Wisconsin. Judge Angela Suchkiewicz signed stipulation and order for the scientific testing to proceed on November 23, 2016. On June 7, 2017, Zellner filed a 1,272-page post-conviction motion citing ineffective assistance of counsel, Brady violations and affidavits by experts debunking the manner in which Teresa Halberg was killed, including new evidence and prosecutorial ethical violations by Calumet County D.A. Ken Kratz. 
Zellner claimed Stephen Avery's conviction was based on planted evidence and false testimony, and is requesting a new trial, in the interests of justice. On October 3, 2017, Avery's motion for a new trial was denied. Petitions On December 20, 2015, a petition was created at petitions.whitehouse.gov titled, Investigate and pardon the Averys in Wisconsin and punish the corrupt officials who railroaded these innocent men. In a January 2016 response to the petition, a White House spokesperson said that since Avery and Dassey are both state prisoners, the president cannot pardon them. A pardon in this case would need to be issued at the state level by the appropriate authorities. A spokesman for Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker stated that Walker had no plans to consider pardoning Avery. A second petition, titled, Initiate a Federal Investigation of the Sheriff's Offices of Manitowoc County and Calumet County, Wisconsin, was submitted to petitions.whitehouse.gov on January 7, 2016. The petition was archived, because it did not meet the minimum signature requirements. Media Coverage On March 26, 2013, the public radio program Radiolab aired an episode titled, Are You Sure? which featured a 24-minute segment entitled, Reasonable Doubt. It explored the story of Stephen Avery from the perspective of Penny Bernson, the woman he was wrongfully convicted of sexually assaulting in 1985. On December 18, 2015, Netflix released Making a Murderer, a 10-episode original documentary series which explores Avery's and Dassey's investigations and trials. The documentary, examines allegations of police and prosecutorial misconduct, evidence tampering, and witness coercion. The series was widely reviewed and discussed in the media. It generated numerous follow-up interviews and articles with parties shown in the documentary, including family members, and some reporters of the trials. A second series of the documentary was released via Netflix on October 19, 2018. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?